Okay, YouTubers, uh, I'm going to get you another video here. Uh, this one's about grounding, uh, bonding, uh, what RF is, uh, uh, how to take care of it. it it's a subject that uh, apparently on my other video I made for Wire Antenna, a lot of people are going back to the grounding part of it. Uh, so I figured I'd just make a grounding one video and uh uh maybe because to be honest whenever i was hunting on youtube it took a lot of searching to try to figure out what the hell shit was and what the hell this was how is it how am i supposed to do this so what i did was i made up you might laugh um it's i didn't want to sit at the computer and make all nice little graphics and stuff so i just put it on some paper for you but I'm going to step you through a bunch of stuff. First of all, we'll go through the type of antennas and mounts um, that you're going to be using. Uh, there's there's a couple different kinds. You're going to either be mounting it on a pole or a tower, or you're going to be um, using it inside. Um, you know, your situation requires you to use a loop antenna inside because you can't have one outside. Um, there's also another method, and I'm going to save it because it's kind of funny. Uh, but uh, uh, let's talk about um, how you should do your ground and how some people are doing it. Uh, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, and man, uh, a lot of guys are asking for trouble. Um, so I'm going to step you through what I've learned and what, uh, what usually the ARRL handbook states about things but there's some discrepancies I've found um, uh, and I'll step you through uh, a couple of these points of interest right here um, uh, say you got a, a normal house all right and you're going to stick a tower up this is a tower or pole mount okay and uh, this is basically how you should run your ground and how uh, if it's not this way uh, you probably should be looking at your grounding system. Um, the way it's done, it's supposed to be done for a tower mount. So here's your tower. You got your coax coming down. And this is two of the points of interest. Lightning arresters. A lot of people don't use them. Uh, I know I know at least two people that, I, that don't have them, not using them at all. But you really should. Um... Uh, what they do, lightning arrestor is, uh, it's basically a way to get ground to your shield, and it's a way to protect your antenna, uh, your your antenna coax from bringing lightning into your uh, radio. Um, it, uh, I want to state one thing here: uh, a direct hit, and Dave Case, Dave Kassler, uh, uh on his YouTube channel said it best. If you get a direct hit from lightning, all bets are off. <laughs> so nothing I say is going to matter right here. Um, but if you're getting a nearby strike and you don't have a lightning arrestor on, you're going to get some uh, uh, unwanted RF coming into your radio. Uh, so uh, now I will say this. If you have an outside antenna, it will build up static electricity. Uh, if it's outside from the wind, uh, a lightning arrestor will take that, pull that out of there. It'll go to ground. Um, so uh, that's another reason why you want to run these. Now, a lot of people want to know where you put the lightning arrestor. Well, you put it on your ground rod. Uh, wherever you put your ground rod, that's where you're going to bring your coax from your antenna to. Uh, just like this little diagram shows you're going to bring your coax down either to your lightning arrestor here on your tower and if you got a tower you want to run three uh ground rods individual uh for each leg uh, that, that's important uh it, it helps most guys don't they just stick it in the ground and run one ground rod over their wire to the uh, mast and that's done but you really should run three um but you bring your coax down to your lightning arrestor. It's just going to screw in. You're just going to have uh, uh, coax on one end and coax on the other. And there's a little pill inside that lightning arrestor that sits in there. 
and if you get enough voltage to trip that it sets off that gas or whatever and it trips and shorts out um, if you're running an antenna outside you really should have a lightning arrestor you should budget that in if you're going to buy your coax um, MFJ makes a, a cheaper one uh, DX engineering has a couple uh, I think the, pretty much anywhere you look you can type lightning arrestor and find them okay so what you're going to do is when you get your ground rod right here from the house, you're going to bring in your ground rod, uh, get that into the ground. So you're going to be grounding your tower and your uh, uh, outside for your shack, I guess. And I'm, I'll discuss that later. Uh, but you're going to bring a ground rod or that lightning arrestor to either one of those ground rods and get that lightning arrestor on right there. Now that will also give you ground for your shield, and that will bring down your noise level. Uh, uh, it gives that gives it some place to that noise some place to go before it gets to your radio. Um, now most guys will run a ground from the rod up to the window, whatever inside their shack. And I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't do that, but a lot of people are doing it, and I've seen a lot of YouTube. Uh, videos state you should do it but I'll tell you why uh, uh, this is uh, another point uh, from where you're gonna bring your main panel ground now uh, a lot of people uh, they don't do this but you need to this is called bonding and that, that basically brings a, either a bare copper wire around the edge of the house over to where the main panel ground is or wherever that main panel ground is you need to get that outside and this I'll state this outside I seen a YouTube video of a dude run a ground wire through his living room to the other side out the window and ground it to the uh, where the house was grounded <laughs> so don't do that that's a no-no uh, yeah, this all needs to be done outside. And if you're running a bare copper wire from one one lightning, uh, excuse me, one ground rod to a to another, um, you can bury the, the the wire. It helps, so uh, you don't have to lay it across the ground. You can actually bury it. It helps. Um, this is a tower or pole mount. Now, say you got a pole outside. Um, HOA kind of thing, and you can just temporarily put you up a pole while you're talking, and then whatever. There's a way to, to, to ground that pole to help you with your noise level. Um, uh, what you want to do is get, you can get a lightning arrestor and attach it to a ground rod, a short one, even a long one, and leave the long one in the ground, whatever. And then you can, uh, that will allow your coax shield right here, the shield of the coax, to come to basically get its ground through the lightning arrestor because you're, you're attaching your end right there and that that lightning arrestor will be attached to your ground rod all right it'll either have a little tab coming off of it like this one does like mfj makes and you attach that to, to with a wire or whatever to your ground rod or uh like the i think the delta ones from dx engineering they actually have a strap that you put on the ground rod and then this bolts to the strap okay and what that does is that introduces ground to your shield and that takes white noise plus it gives the lightning some a path you know to go to and uh you'll by it hitting the shortest ground the shortest point to ground uh it's not going to come into your shack uh uh it, it will help protect you okay so um, if, if you got uh, an antenna on a tripod or maybe mount it to the edge of a fence, whatever, uh, by, by, getting, by using a ground, short ground rod or a regular ground rod, uh, getting that to, the, uh, to a lightning arrestor will give you the ground also. And these are cheap to pick up. But that, that's another way to do your a pole antenna. Now, you say you got a pole along the edge of the house. If that pole is metal and you drive it into the ground, it, it, there's a borderline dude told me well it's grounded it's a metal rod in the ground which there's no sense in using a copper wire or, or a copper grounding rod and then running a wire to it well that could be true but I think the 
copper rod would be more conductive and it's further down in the ground than what your your pole is going to be so i would i would leave it at that <laughs> i'd definitely probably run a ground rod to a pole if, on the edge of the house if you did that okay now i'm going to step you through these methods now this tower or pole mount may not be your thing uh you can fast forward ahead uh and uh uh jump to the next method I'll, I'll show you another way that we're going to do it but that that covers lightning arresters you need a ground rod and, and then that lightning arrestor attaches to it somewhere you know however outside you know but you got to get it done um this is a tower or pole mount okay that's how you should ground that uh if, if this is outside now if you're inside you're going to use a counterpoise method and that's different and i'll show you that here in a little while just hang on um, this is for a tower or pole mount, okay? Uh, either one, if it's on top of the ground or if you got a pole in the ground, you, you want to hook it up this way. The, the orange lines are the ground, okay? Your orange lines will be the ground, that you, and uh, the purple lines are our coax, okay? So we're stopping our coax at, the, at one of the ground rods and hooking our lightning arrestor to that, right? And then run another piece of coax to inside the shack okay that's how you're supposed to do it same way with this vertical if you got it just on a pole or on a fence or whatever uh, you got a ground rod somewhere and then you're getting that coax to this lightning arrestor and then another piece of coax out of there into your shack wherever or into your bedroom whatever into your basement but that's how a tower or pole mount should be mounted and grounded. That's the way it should be. You should you should have uh, your poles, your your uh, legs of your tower, each one grounded, and then have a ground rod separate for your uh, uh, lightning arrestor. Some guys say you can do it off the same one. Um, I don't know. I'm not a tower expert by any means, but. Uh, That'd be something you need to search, research more. But that, that's the best way I can tell you to do it. Now, I'll explain on the next one here, rooftop mount, okay? Say you're gonna mount your antenna on a roof uh, top. This is my method, this is what I did. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a ground rod outside the building, okay? You add a ground rod and you put your lightning arrestor on Remember, we're going to search those and buy one of those, okay? And then get that lightning arrestor on. Now we're going to set up our antenna. Now you can do one of two things on antennas uh, if you're mounting them on a rooftop. You can put it on a fiberglass pole or you can put it on a metal pole. Um, and the one thing uh, that you should never do, okay, is never bring your ground off the ground. That's a rule, okay? Just, be, just because somebody says, well, no, you got to run a ground wire all the way up there and ground that out or else you're going to get hit. No, what you're creating is a lightning rod. <laughs> you don't want to do that. That's what those guys, people get paid for to come in and run uh, wires all the way down and put little needle points up, little antennas up so that it can pull the lightning around and around. You're not doing that. <laughs> you're, you're, if you're grounding it, you ground on the ground okay never bring your ground up all right and uh a lot of people do i've seen a lot of videos where people are putting that ground rod right outside the shack and they're bringing it over to the window and hooking it up to their window whatever and then bringing it in and hooking it up to your uh, ground inside you probably shouldn't be doing that because you're going against code all right um never bring a ground from outside, inside. Rule. That's the rule. Everybody's going to argue about this if they see it. I'm going to get a lot of comments for this, I bet. But that if you read the handbooks, if you read the, the rules the, that states ground is outside, okay? You never bring your ground inside. You go to your main panel, okay? If you've got your equipment inside, you use your inside ground, your panel ground. And I'll, I know I'm going to hear some flack on this, but this is, this is how it states, okay? 
what you're doing whenever you put your ground rod in, okay? You put that ground rod in, you have to get that, that, that ground rod added to the main panel ground, wherever that main panel is grounded, all right? Now, that's called bonding, okay? That bonds this ground rod to this, this, this main place where all the grounds in the building run back to, okay? That's your common ground area. So, a lot of guys are not doing this. They are not doing that, and uh, it's, you should. Uh, most buildings, though, uh, this is my situation, have an oofer ground. <laughs> kind of funny knowing. <laughs> oofer ground. And what it is, is whenever they lay the foundation of the building, they put iron rebarb in the foundation. And what they do is they pour the concrete over that, and now now the whole foundation of the building becomes ground. Okay, so you have your one main panel, say where the electricity comes in uh, to the building. That main panel is grounded here on the building to the oofer. Okay, any other electrical panel within that building is also grounded um, to the oofer ground. That's your main ground, basically, is the oofer. Okay, and if you have that kind of ground, um, then if you add a ground rod outside right here, uh, you have to you have to get that over to the oofer. And guess what? I gotta pay for that. So that's an added expense if you're going, thinking about radioing that you're gonna have to do. Uh, because if you get hit by lightning and you've got uh, several apartments in one building or whatever, and you cause a fire, you're liable. They'll come in and say, "Hey, he's not. He's not. He didn't have that done right." <laughs> so there's a lot of things you got to configure. If you got your own house and you're not worried about the insurance company coming in and saying, "Well, now I see why you, got, you know, burn up because you got hit by lightning and you didn't have it grounded right." Well, now you're out. So uh, you, you really should be looking at the uh, at the 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 regulations. Uh, but a lot of people don't. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, you live and learn, I guess. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much um, a rooftop mount, okay? We're just putting our antenna up there. We can use a fiberglass pole. We can use a metal pole. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of TV antennas have been, for years have been mounted since the 50s on metal tripods up on the roof, you know? No ground, uh, usually, if you see it in commercial settings, you'll see a main ground run up there. Uh, but for a typical home use, and I think for the regulations on that from what I remember, uh, it states that as long as you uh, bring the coax to ground um, uh, somewhere on the ground, then you're, you're, you're good. Uh, that's just for TV. <laughs> so, because it, it's receive only, I guess, I don't know. But that's the way it is in my area. Now, in your area, it might be different. But I don't know. That's rules and regulations are different everywhere. But anyway, um, adding one ground to the building's ground, okay? One ground rod to the building ground rod, you gotta bond it. You gotta bring it back over to that main, wherever that, oof, if it's an oofer, you gotta get it hooked to the oofer. If, if it's a main panel that's way over on the other end of the building, you're gonna have to run a bare copper wire or insulated wire all the way around over there. So that's another expense you're gonna have to think of. Um, but that puts you in code. Uh, if you don't bond, uh, you're against code. You're liable, just so you know. Um, and now let's go to something. <laughs> There's another method you can do. I call this the country boy method. <laughs> you find you a tree out there somewhere. <laughs> And you gotta you just hoist you up an antenna up there, right? <laughs> well, there you go. That's the country boy method. Uh, but yeah, you should always still uh, main panel bond to your your outside shack ground. Okay. Um, I'm gonna tell you, don't bring your ground inside. Again, you shouldn't do it. You go you 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 go from that panel to your radio shack inside. And uh, you, like my uh, 
this is what my situation I'm going to have to pay an electrician uh, I'll show you uh, I'm going to have to pay an electrician to come to my panel that's inside my apartment and put a plug out of there onto the wall for a special kind of plug for a ground and then I come out of there with a, just a roll up cable or what have you and I'll have to bring it all the way around to where my radios are what have you so just to give you some idea that is the correct way to do it no ground from outside should come inside the building uh, I had to pay a person an electrician that knew about grounding to come in and tell me that because <laughs> I thought maybe I could go like this since my ground rod is out here here's the building my air conditioner sits right here there's a nice little panel there that runs my air conditioner it has a nice ground in there I thought I could maybe sneak it over there to that ground no, no, you're not allowed to intrude into a wall plug, into any other uh, single connection. Uh, that goes against code, too. Uh, it's a big no-no. So, yeah. So, as you can see, I'm going to have to pay somebody to come in and run me a common ground or get my ground rod into the buildings, the oofer uh, ground, or have him pay to run a ground to my main panel over there so um, but yeah if you're a country boy out there and got your tree got your tree up there and you got your dipole there strung up right here's your dipole ends you always have a ballon or something out there that your coax hooks to bring that down make sure you get it to ground lightning arrestor okay can't stress that enough lightning arrestor you gotta buy them you gotta use them okay if you don't, you're asking for it. If you don't get that coax to ground right there, any wind that blows over this ant wire right here is creating static electricity. And that's coming right down that coax right into your shack, right into the back of your radio. And people wonder, well, hey, I'll plug my SDR in my coax. It sparked and now it don't work. Oh, well, you didn't have your antenna wire grounded. Your coax grounded. <laughs> that's, that shield is on that wire for a purpose. Okay. A lot of people think that that negative and positive thing happens on that shield. No. Uh, and I'll give you a lesson here. A coax is unbalanced. Balanced and unbalanced. The difference is the dipole antenna has one leg there, one leg there. Coax hooks to the middle. One goes to there. One goes to there. It's working positive and negative on two planes parallel to each other. Okay? That is a balanced antenna. Okay? Coax is unbalanced. It uses the center connector to both transfer positive and negative. Okay? Positive, negative. This one has one. This one has two. Okay, if you run the ladder line, that's balanced. Okay, it's using negative over here, positive over here, and it flip flops. That's how it works. On coax, it's not. That is not balanced. Okay, there's another lesson. Okay, the reason why I'm telling you this is because you were going to learn what the shield wire does on a counterpoise. You need to learn that. Okay. Um, because that's part of grounding. A lot of people think the shield wire is a ground wire. It's not, it's a shield. Okay, it allows, it allows the, the neutrons to flow one way and then that's it. <laughs> okay, all that is is a shield. It, it does allow ground, isn't it? Because it's basically what it is, you're negative, no, uh, you're going to ground. But it's not an actual ground wire, okay? So, you know, but the country boy needs to do the same thing. He's got to get that to a lightning arrestor outside. Don't bring your lightning arrestors inside. I've seen guys on YouTube do that. That's a no, no. 
uh-uh. <laughs> You leave your your ground rod outside, your lightning arrestor outside, and then you bring one coax in, or two coax off two lightning arresters, whatever. How many lightning arresters, coax you gonna have? All right, it's all done outside. Your main panel needs to be bonded to that other grounding rod. There again, we're bonding that, uh, adding, a, adding a ground rod to the existing ground, okay? That's what bonding is, so we're bonding that. Now, some guys are getting away with throwing that antenna up there and they just unhook the coax from the radio and then just discharge it, uh, connect the two, uh, connect the two ends together and it discharges and then you can plug it in and use it. I wouldn't advise it. You're going to forget one time and burn up your radio. But uh, if you're doing it a different way, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna get a ton of comments on this, but it, 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 if you get into learning about grounding and, all, and bonding and all that, you're gonna figure out you never bring your ground inside, okay? That's a no-no. And I'll show you here. Your counterpoise method, okay? There's two ways. You got Inside your ham shack, okay? So here's your chair, here's your desk. You got your radio here, okay? Notice we brought our coax to right here because we're gonna split our coax open and one, the shield, the outside shield, goes to a wire, okay? Lay it on the floor. And then the center shield, that's a, you know, that basically it's a dipole antenna. Um, uh, uh, this center hot goes to the antenna all right then you can run that it, it's gonna be noisy as hell you're gonna pick up a lot of noise all right um, so here's how you can do it with a ground okay just get a ground rod outside run your coax from your radio outside attach it to your ground uh, lightning arrestor outside okay and then coax it back into your antenna what it does is it, it it gives that RF, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. It gives that RF somewhere to go, make, drops your noise floor down, okay? Uh, you can hear things better by doing that. Okay, so you can do a, a counterpoise that's uh, just counterpoise only. Like say you live in an, an apartment uh, eight stories up. Well, that's the way it's gonna happen, all right? Uh, I gotta break this video up because my phone I am recording with my phone it only goes 30 minutes so uh, I'll edit it back in here and then we'll continue uh, talking about the uh, uh, counterpoise method all right okay now we're back all right uh, so you got your inside antenna all right and let's say you're on a magnet mount right Really, all you need to do, you don't have to worry about a counterpoise, nothing like that. Find something metal. Bigger the metal area, the better you off you are. That's your counterpoise, okay? So that, that, that'll that help you on a magnet-type mount. Um, there, there are other methods online about adding a counterpoise to a magnet mount. You can research those. I don't know about that, but I know if you use a magnet mount, you want to use a um, biggest metal area as you can get, okay? That's if you're inside. Now, say you got a, a vertical antenna and you want to plug it in inside there and you want to stick it next to the window, right? This is your method. This is your method, your counterpoise method. You're, not, you're going to try a country boy thing, a country boy tree mount. Your rooftop mount's not out for you and you're not doing a tower or pole mount, okay? So this is your method. Now you may, you know, you need to pick your method, find out which one's best for your situation. But uh, you can't get to ground. You know that that's a lot of people's situations. If you're using a, if you're stuck in that situation, um, if you can't get to a ground rod and get to ground, um, you need to you need to come up with a counterpoise. So that counterpoise, like I said. Uh, some antennas you can buy them and they already have the counterpoise wire attached, you know, it's just part of the antenna 
if you have to make your own, uh, say you want to run a magnetic loop, okay? Magnetic loops don't don't require uh, a counterpoise. Uh, matter of fact, I'll show you mine. <laughs> it's right there. All that is is a circle of metal right there. With the coax attached one to here, one to there, the shield to there, hot one to there. And it's not even attached up here. It's just sitting there. The, it couples using the magnetic field uh, instead of um, the electric field. And that's how magnetic loops, you don't need a counterpoise for those. That's why they're so great for inside receive. If you're an HLA, you're trying to use a vertical antenna inside, I'd switch to a magnetic loop, either buy one or search for one that'll fit in your area, fit inside the square space that you have to use, and uh, I'd advise getting one of those uh, instead of an antenna of, of a vertical. Vertical uses the electric field. The, le uh, the magnetic field runs horizontal, your electric field runs vertical, okay? And they constantly are doing this, okay? back and forth creating that wave all right the magnetic field it, it, it is not as noisy as the electric uh, field is running verticals okay any kind of vertical dipole any kind of antenna like that uh, a lot of guys are making high power magnetic loops uh, just for the fact that you have no noise zero it's hardly no noise because it, it works differently it works off that different wave than a vertical does but that's something to check into if you're in an HOA. But you need to know what the ground is, okay? So if you can't get to a ground, you got to run your wire just out down the hallway, throw it out, whatever. You can coil it up. I've heard that kind of messes the antenna up sometimes. So um, you can try it, see. Um, they make it different style antennas. Now say you're putting this up in the attic, okay? Up there in the attic. That's a great, you know, a lot of people are doing that. Uh, you can do the same thing. It's just run your coax a little longer, the purple up here, and then swap it out. Um, you know, if some of them are already done, you just screw in your coax. You don't need a ground, you know, to run an antenna inside at all. The difference is you're going to pick up noise. It's going to be noisier you got to figure out some way of getting it outside to a ground and I know if you can't get it to a ground that you, the counterpoise is it so um, a lot of guys are using big metal plates with magnet mount antennas um, and then grounding to the uh, metal plate uh, you know that way uh, using the magnet to ground to the big metal plate that helps take away some of the noise you know but you got to do what you got to do for your situation. So, but I would seriously think if you're inside and you're trying to look for something to receive, you can talk off these magnetic loops too. It's a little different to build. Um, uh, you, you have to pay attention to make sure you're not building a receive one to try to transmit on. <laughs> you're going to run into problems. All right. So, all right. So, uh, with that being said, this, this is the way to do it. If you can get it outside, if you're outside, you, you want to get that coax, you know, brought down to the ground, bring it back into the radio. Like say you live on two-story building, right? You got several windows here, you know, below you, right? Never, never, never bring your ground up, okay? Grounding stays on the ground. Always remember that. Grounding stays on the ground. Now, inside your shack, right, you got inside room in your shack, and that's all you got. That center of the coax, and then your shield becomes your counterpoise, or your ground, people call it. It's not a ground. It's basically where the shield wire connects. It's not the center connector where it connects. It connects to the main uh, uh, element. But that shield might connect to a magnet mount there. Some guys are tapping into that shield area and running a counterpoise off of that you know that's just something you might want to think of uh, about you can research it and see all right i hope this is helping <laughs> now here's where it's going to get messy um 
check grounding. <laughs> I've got guys already fuming if they're watching this, I'm sure. They're fuming at the bit. There's two ways to do it, or there's two methods. And there's one that's the right way, one that's the wrong way. <clears throat> and uh, you can see by the diagram, there's these are pretty much the same uh, same diagrams. I forgot to draw my ground rods in. <clears throat> Just draw them in. There's two methods you can do. And it starts right here. Bringing that ground into your shack. According to the rules and regulations, that's a no-no. It creates ground loops. And that's a big problem. Uh, because you're plugging your equipment into the electrical outlets using that ground. And what happens when, that ha when, when you do that, uh, say you plug your power supply in, right? Even though you're bringing that ground in and you're running a ground strap up to it, you're creating a ground loop. And that's what you do not want to do. Uh, a lot of guys, well, just pull that ground plug out of the plug. <laughs> yeah, okay, wait till it burns down. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, where a lot. Of, I think a lot of people are going wrong. Uh, if you want to ground your radio, if you want to ground any equipment, you take it to a central location inside your shack and then that ground goes back to your panel not outside that's where a lot of people are going wrong i see it all the time on youtube while i was searching for grounding i've seen i've seen some bad bad stuff but i had to figure out what's right uh, because i have to i have an antenna outside so uh if i'm gonna have that hooked up and working and I, I, my insurance can't allow it, so I had to, I had to learn what is what, <laughs> how to do it. So, um, you know, people are going to say, oh, well, that's wrong, man. You should always run your ground from a ground rod outside your shack inside. It helps take care of your RF. Well, RF is supposed to be dealt with in another way. But the problem is those people haven't learned how to do that. And that's where the, the issues come in with this, with these, with shack grounding. Okay, this is the correct way you're supposed to do it. Okay, you bring your, your, from your main ground of your panel, wherever that's grounded, over to your ground rod and you bond your ground rod. Okay, now here's another, another one. I, I'm, I, I really don't know this because there's two explanations for it. One says you're supposed to ground your tower to your uh, next grounding rod, and you're supposed to connect them, so to speak. Uh, I've seen where that is a no-no and where it's true. I don't know. That's a skippy subject right there, iffy subject, about if you need to ground your pole or your tower, okay? Um, your coax will come in through your lightning arrestor right where it is, okay, off, off your ground rod like it, like it should. But you just won't take that ground from outside up to that window uh, thing that a lot of people are using. It has that ground screw on it, and they run that ground rod up to it and connect it, and then they hook it inside and bring it in. You're not supposed to do that. Um, but the coax is stopped. The lightning and everything is stopped at the lightning arrestor at the ground. It takes the shortest path. Okay, So you might get a little RF through this, but there's uh, methods of using chokes and ferrites to stop that, okay? Um, but anyway, the ground in the shack from outside, no, no. Uh, from, from what I've learned, it's a no-no. You're not supposed to bring the outside ground in, okay? If you're inside, you go to your panel ground. If you're outside, you go to your grounding rod and your euphor ground or your your main panel ground outside. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, because that'll make everything even, balanced. If you bring the ground inside, you're creating a shorter path. You're creating a ground loop. 
and that's a no-no. So you, you, you want to, if you're grounding the inside, you need to bond to your panel. All right. If you get RF, right, you're supposed to buy those chokes, you know, and you wrap the coax through the choke. That stops RF. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay. You still have your ground uh, going to a central ground for RF. That's hooked to your equipment. We'll step into that. But it uses a central uh, grounding point, just like just like you always did. The only difference is you're not hooking it to the outside ground. You're hooking it to the main panel inside ground. Okay, that's the only difference. That's what I've I've learned from the, reading the codes and the regulations. Um, method one, of course. Why is this bad? Well, because you're bringing that ground inside. That's why it's bad. Okay. You're hooking your radio, your power supply, your antenna tuner inside the shack, your amp. You're plugging that into your ground on the inside. Okay. That, that ground don't go to the outside. It goes back to the main panel where it's all centrally located. Okay. By you bringing that ground inside and hooking it to the back of these uh, uh, from your central location there, you're creating a ground loop. You're creating a ground loop. If you got any kind of three prong plug that has a ground on it, and you're plugging it into your shack to run something in your shack, and then you're, you're connecting a ground from outside to the back of that, you're, you just created a ground loop and you're asking to get hit. But, you know, it, a lot of people's gonna say that's wrong, but uh, it, 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 it's the way you're supposed to, okay? Um, if your your radio's inside, if your amp is inside, okay, uh, your meter, your antenna tuner is inside, you bring it down to a central location, okay, but that 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 ground, the orange is ground, okay, or purple is coax, that orange ground, I made it orange for a reason, I didn't want any other colors to be confused, okay, no black, no green, no nothing. Your actual ground, okay, is going to the main panel, like method two here, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, method two. Okay. So, you bring your coax in to your lightning arrestor to your ground rod outside. It has your lightning arrestor on it, and you bring your coax in. Now, uh, now here's where it gets confusing when guys say, well, dang it, that ground is coming right inside. <laughs> well, yeah, it is, but it's made for, you're, you're doing this for lightning, you, you know, and it helps with the noise, <laughs> but you're doing this for, in case you get hit by lightning, it's going to stop here, okay, lightning takes the shortest path, so it's going to stop here before it goes, oh, well, I need to run over here and up this coax and into the radio room, well, if you take a direct hit, all bets are off, okay? But this is for nearby strikes. It always takes the the path of least resistance. And if you got chokes or bit ferrite beads on your coax coming in, like you should, you'll be good. But a lot of people don't run ferrites and chokes and none of that. So that's why that's why they're doing that. But uh, it's it's it, this is basically this is a single point grounding for inside your shack. Okay, bring it down to however you want to do it. If you want to use just wire and bring it down to a, uh, bring it down to a, uh, <laughs> a central location, you just use wire. But they, they advise using ground straps, inch longer. And the reason why you're doing that is for RF. You're not really doing it for grounding purposes. The, uh, when you plug your, Usually when you plug most of your uh, accessories in, if they're plug-in, uh, the, the, the case is going to be grounded anyway. And you're basically just taking the house ground, not actually grounding to, say, per se, a rod, ground rod. Um, what you're doing is taking the RF. Now, a lot of guys in the, a lot of techs, they won't be, have this problem a lot because they're not running a lot of power. 
HF, the HF guys are running the power, and that's where, that's where you get the RF. Uh, if you're talking on a VHF on a 100-watt radio, you're not getting much RF, uh, if any. Uh, very little, unless you got crappy coax. Um, so, it, it, there's some things you're going to interfere with. It'll always happen, but by connecting all your all your all your radio power supply antenna tuner your amp whatever you're plugging in by by using strap okay down to a single point that is basically pulling your rf out then you're going to have chokes uh, you should have a choke on every coax connection uh, at least i i'm going to i i have to uh, it takes the noise away uh, i live in an apartment and it's just noisy as hell <laughs> So you're getting the neighbor's stuff and the other neighbors and what have you. So um, I had to learn about ferrites and beads and chokes and what type of material to use and all that. But uh, yeah, most of the uh, most of the this RF stuff is associated with the uh, uh, high frequency range because they're running big power up there. But um, you still get RF, and you'll get RF from a nearby lightning strike, what have you. So you're best off to run all your equipment to one main ground, okay, one main grounding point in your shack, and then run a wire from there to your main panel inside, okay? That's the way you're supposed to do it. And no ground from outside is brought in, okay? That's why this method is better. Okay, choke some ferrets and beads for the RF. Okay, you're gonna get RF if you're gonna run an amp. I guarantee you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you need to look at the the chokes or those little donut looking things that look like a magnet, and then you just basically have a hole in the middle, and you just run the coax through. You know, eight, ten, twenty times. I don't know <laughs> however many times you can get the noise out. And you won't have noise coming over that coax line because RF is on the outside. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay. So, you have your RF. You got everything connected right. You got your power supply, your meter, your tuner, your amp, your radios. All grounded with big, you know, thick strap. All coming down to one spot there behind your uh, desk or wherever. Okay. That one, if you're going to do method one, the ground goes outside. Okay? <laughs> I wouldn't advise it. If you're going to do method two, the ground goes to the panel. Okay? Now, this has to be bonded. Okay? It won't work right. Uh, the, this one here has to be bonded. Method one. Okay, uh, method two, uh, the only really bonding you're doing is going from all the equipment to one central location. That's bonding everything to one, and then you're taking that to the main panel inside. Okay, so <laughs> I hope this helps because a lot of people have been going back and they're just viewing the grounding part that I, I mentioned in my wire antenna. And... You can review back through and go through this, look at method one and method two, but um, method one, if you bring the, if you bring the ground from outside, inside, uh, um, you, you should be, unless you're running all batteries to run your equipment, uh, you, you'd be fine then. But if you're plugging anything into the power outlet and then you're attaching that uh, RF strap, you're asking for trouble, you're creating a ground loop. Okay, and that's a bad thing. So, I don't know, uh, this one may get a lot of controversy, but it needed to be said. Uh, I, I've, I've been watching too many bad YouTube videos. You know, guys running <laughs> number six ground wire all the way up to the eave of the roof and connecting it to their to their tripod uh, mount for their antenna. <laughs> You're just making a lightning rod, man. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, you know, 
using the uh, lightning arresters, a lot of people are not using those at all. Uh, so, you know, that's another big one. But you can go through either method. You can go through method one or method two. Start utilizing your inside panel as your ground for your radio and your RF. Because that's where it's going. It's going to ground. So the only difference is you're not shoving it outside. So, I don't know. This one may get some speculation from it. But I had to learn it because I'm, I'm having to issues you know hooking mine up because I gotta do it right because um, where I live and I'm sure this applies to everywhere because the electrician that I talked to said <laughs> that this is uh, his regulations and I'm pretty sure that's like federally done not state and local but anyway um, don't bring your ground inside uh, I think that's the best way to say it uh, on this. If you got, you know, you want to bond inside, you want to bond to the inside panel, to all your stuff. You don't want to bring that ground inside. So, uh, if if you pick out your method, find out which method you're gonna you're gonna be the country boy <laughs> method there. That that tell you how to do it. If you're gonna use the counterpoise method. You know, uh, or you got the rooftop mount, you know, uh, either one. But uh, maybe you got a tower or a pole, you know, try that method. But this will tell you how to get it grounded, um, how, how to properly do it uh, uh, according to the regulations where I'm at. So, but you're not supposed to bring your any ground inside because that, apparently that's a no-no. You're the, from what I was told that you're not going to be covered by your insurance. You're not going to be. So a lot of people need to look into that, but some people do. But uh, uh, I hope that helps because uh, you know your your connections. Basically, if you're trying to visualize in your head, you know, well, how am I going to hook this up? How how does it need to be hooked up? Your antenna has, your coax has two connections, that's it. You, you just plug one in to the other. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, you, you, you visualize, okay, my antenna's over there. I got to bring coax to here because here's my ground rod. I need something to hook to the ground rod. You need a lightning arrestor. That'll give you a pass through. You hook that one up hook another piece of coax so you'll have to think okay I'm gonna need two pieces of coax not just one okay because you when you hit that lightning arrestor you're splitting your coax okay so you're gonna need two pieces of coax and then you're gonna bring that into your shack or into your room whatever uh, you, you there's a lot of ways to hook up that if you just got a radio or a SDR or something like that Hook that to your uh, other end, get it connected. If you've got to buy a reducer to reduce it down from SMA to uh, to coax. Give me an example. There's your reducer. Takes it from regular coax down to the SMA. Make sure you got those if you if you need it. Uh, but grounding, you should never never bring your out your ground if, from outside inside. Uh, according to the rules <laughs> if you want to do it correctly so uh, I, I had to reevaluate how I was under the impression when I first started this that it was okay for me to bring a ground rod and bring it bring a wire in from out there to ground all my all my radio equipment and it's not that was I totally was floored from that I was like well what the hell am I supposed to do uh, you know how in the hell am I supposed to get a ground under my panel? <laughs> well, you got to pay an electrician to come in and put a, uh, a plug uh, that you can plug into, and it gives you a ground that you can run over to your uh, central grounding station here. Uh, so that's another thing I didn't expect. That was an expense I didn't expect. So uh, yeah, that's going to have to be have to be done. I didn't realize that, but he told me. The, the guy that I asked, uh, since I'm, this is a Eufer ground, um, 
I'll probably get lucky because all I have to do is dig down to the foundation and find a piece of the rebar. He said, we can just link into that if we can do that, but I got to pay somebody to dig a hole <laughs> and get down there. You know, I can't do it. I'm, in my situation, I can't, I can't do it. So, um, you know, it's a lot of people don't realize what you got to do. It's a little bit more than what you think. And just throwing the radio up. If you're talking VHF, um, yeah, if you're not running power, um, you're not going to get a lot of RF. Uh, and, uh, you know, RF always runs on the outside of the coax. So, uh, and it, it wants to find the path of least resistance, just like lightning. So, um, if you get RF into your into your shack, you're supposed to ground it to your main panel. That's the best the best device I could tell people. <laughs> uh, connection wise, you know, bonding is the way to go. So uh, make sure you get bonded and uh, get your lightning arresters and your ground rods. Ground rods are cheap, so. You know, you can do it yourself, and uh, if you do it right, you, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. So, anyway, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I hope it explained a few things about what grounding and bonding is, and how you should hook it, hook what situation you have to hook, how you need to hook it up. Uh, just remember, you know, anytime you go through a lightning arrestor, you're splitting your coax. You're going to need two separate links of coax. Um, uh, you want to get strap for your radio stuff. Don't get just the wire. You can use wire, but um, RF uh, likes to run on hip th on thicker, wider things. So um, to get it out quicker, that's what you use strap. Uh, then bring that down and uh, to your main panel inside. Uh, don't don't bring your ground inside. But anyway, I hope that helps, and we'll see. Maybe this one will get a lot of hits because apparently people has been checking out the grounding part of my wire antenna one. So don't forget to hit the subscribe. Thanks. Okay. If after all you learned here, uh, I'm going to give you a cheap, easy solution to the whole problem. Because I know it's complicated, and it's getting complicated. You might think it's overcomplicated. But this is going to solve the whole problem for you, okay? So let me show you. You got to go to the store, hardware store, maybe Dollar General, maybe Dollar Store, something like that. You got to buy one of these, okay? That's what you need right there. You don't need no grounds, no stinking grounds. Make sure, though, that you unhook your coax every night. Plop her right down in there. You're good to go. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. 73.